I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Today we're going to look at a little bit of interesting historical mathematics. And in particular, we're going to investigate the Babylonian square root estimation technique. So let's say our goal is to estimate a square root. So in other words, the square root of s, where s is a positive real number. So this technique involves like doing a loop of better and better and better approximation. So our first step is to begin with a starting guess. We'll call that starting guess x naught. And that really can be any positive real number. As we'll see with some examples, it helps to start close to the square root, but you don't actually have to start very close to the square root at all. And then the second step is to define x n plus 1 as the average or the arithmetic mean of x n and s over x n. So in particular, x sub 1 will be the average of x 0 and s over x 0. And then x sub 2 will be the average of x1 and s over x1. And then we repeat kind of as necessary. So for as many steps as we would like or until we've uh, reached the desired level of approximation. And so this is sort of an old style of writing this estimation technique. What we would do kind of in a modern way is to write it as a recursively defined sequence. So that's what I've done right here. So in modern terms, what we would do is let x naught be an arbitrary positive real number. And then for n bigger than or equal to zero, we'll define x n plus one to be one half xn plus s over xn. So that's the arithmetic mean of those two numbers. And what's going on kind of under the hood here is that the arithmetic mean is being used to approximate the geometric mean. Because let's notice if we take the geometric mean of these two numbers, xn and s over xn, well that's the square root of their product which equals the square root of s. So that's kind of why this thing works. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples and then we'll indeed prove that this serves as a good approximation, which in modern terms will be to prove that the limit of this recursively defined sequence is in fact the square root of s. But some examples first. So for our first example, we'll approximate the square root of five and we'll pick a good starting value, and that starting value will be the floor of the square root of 5, which is clearly equal to 2, because 5 is just a bit bigger than 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so let's calculate x1, so that's going to be 1 half the average of x0 and 5 over x0. So in other words, 2 and 5 over 2. Great. So that's a fairly simple calculation. So we end up with nine over four. And I've in fact calculated the error as we go here. And the error in this case is 0 0.014. So already, already we're getting a pretty good approximation. Okay, so let's see what's happening for x2. So x2 will be one half and then we'll have, let's see, 9 over 4 plus 5 over 9 over 4. So doing that calculation, we end up with 161 over 72. And the error here is even smaller. So the error here is 0, 0.0000, so we have four zeros and then four three. So this is a very quickly converging sequence. But I think most of that has to do with the fact that we made a very good guess at first. Okay, so let's maybe call this one in hindsight example one, and now let's look at example two. And here we're going to approximate the square root of two with what I'll call a bad choice for x naught. In other words, a bad initial guess. And what would a bad initial guess be? Well, I think a thousand is a pretty bad initial guess because a thousand most definitely way bigger than the square root of two. Okay, so let's calculate x sub one first. So that's gonna be one half and then we'll have a thousand plus two over a thousand. And so you can calculate this out and we end up with 
500,001 over 1,000. And you can get the error in this case. And the error in this case is 499. I um, rounded that a little bit, but that's like close enough since the error is so large here. Now I won't calculate x2 or x3 or whatever, I'll just calculate x10 and x20, but I did this in a computer. So x10 ends up being approximately equal to 1.5796. And I say it's approximately equal to that because in fact it's a rational number with a very, very large numerator and a very, very large denominator. And that wouldn't fit on the board. In fact, it barely fits on the computer screen. Okay, so what's the error in this case? So the error in this case is about equal to 0 0.165. So even though we made a pretty terrible first approximation, only after 10 steps, we have a fairly small error. And then if we go down to x20, we get approximately 1.14142. But you might look at that and say that looks pretty close to the square root of 2 already, and in fact it is. So the error in this case is about 2.6 times 10 to the minus 1,288. So again, I think this is pretty interesting, even though we have a starting point, which is way, way far away from the square root of two, our 20th term of our sequence is astronomically close to the value of the square root of two. Another thing that I'd like to point out here is in order to get this precision, I had to increase Mathematica's built-in precision limit, otherwise it would have seen not, no error at all. Okay, so I think we've got two pretty interesting examples. And now let's properly prove that this sequence indeed converges to the square root of s. Squarespace is the best place to go to set up your own awesome website or online store. If you want to set up your own domain, website, or online retail space, it's super easy to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy-to-use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24-7 customer service. Math people out there, let's up our website game. Squarespace's platform makes it easy to create well-designed artistic websites with easy LaTeX integration. This is a great way to make your website stand out in a sea of other academic websites. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash michaelpin to save 10% off your first order of a website or a domain. So what are you waiting for? Now is a great time to level up your online presence with a website through Squarespace. And once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we're gonna finish this video off by proving this claim that says that our recursively defined sequence over here indeed converges to the square root of s, meaning this Babylonian approximation method is a really good approximation method, or at least it serves as an approximation method. So in fact, we'll look at a special case where our initial guess is between one and the square root of s. You can prove like a result in parallel just with a few tweaks for the values when x is bigger than the square root of s, but we won't worry about that here. Okay, good. So we're gonna first consider the following function. We're gonna use a little bit of calculus here. So let's consider the function f of x equals one half x plus s over x. Great. And then let's take the derivative of this function. So the derivative of this function will be one half one minus s over x squared. But let's notice that this is bigger than zero. In other words, the derivative is bigger than zero when x is less than the square root of s. Well, and most definitely when it's bigger than or equal to one. In fact, it just has to be bigger than or equal to zero there. So in other words, this function is an increasing function. So let's write that down. So f of x is increasing on the interval one to the square root of s. That's what we've just shown with the so-called first derivative test. 
So now that we've got this taken care of, we will show that our sequence is bounded and monotonic. And then that means by the monotonic sequence there, or the monotone sequence theorem, that this thing converges. Okay, so let's first show that it's bounded. And what we'll indeed show is that for all natural numbers n, we have xn is indeed between one and the square root of s. And we can do that, like I said, with induction. And our base case is already done because it's built into our setup right here. So let's make an induction hypothesis. Let, so let's suppose for k bigger than or equal to zero, we have xk is between one and the square root of s. Okay. But now, since our function f is increasing on that interval, if we apply the function to each part of this inequality, then the inequality is still satisfied. So let's do that. So we've got f of 1 is less than or equal to f of xk, which is strictly less than f of the square root of s. Okay. But now let's notice that f of one is equal to something like one half s plus one, which itself is clearly bigger than one. And then f of xk is clearly equal to xk plus one based off of our definition of f, as well as the way we're defining the sequence. And then the square root of s is in fact a fixed point for this function, so we can just bring down the square root of s here. So that means that we have a bounded function here. So I'll just put a check mark here. We've shown that this thing is bounded by the principle of mathematical induction. And then we'll next show that this is an increasing function, or sorry, an increasing sequence, but showing it's an increasing sequence is really pretty straightforward. Let's notice that xk plus one is equal to f of xk again by the definition of our function and by our recursion over here, but that is strictly bigger than xk based on the fact that our function is increasing in the appropriate interval, which we showed that all of these values are in the appropriate interval in this bounded proof right here. So we've got that this is a bounded increasing function, so that means this is a convergent sequence. Now we just have to calculate its limit. We just got done showing that our sequence converges. Now we'll show that it converges to the square root of s. So we showed that it converges, so I'll call its limit x, and then we'll do a bit of a calculation. So let's notice we have x is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of xn, but that'll be the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of xn plus one. That'll be the same thing as one half the limit as n goes to infinity of xn plus s over xn. Great. But now we can bring the limit inside of that little calculation, and that leaves us with one half x plus s over x. So something like that. And so that gives us a nice and fairly simple equation that we can solve for x. So let's see, we can multiply that through and move the half x over, and that leaves us with half x equals one half s over x, which means that x squared equals s, which means that x equals the square root of s. You might say, well, could it be equal to negative the square root of s? But because of what we've proven about the boundedness of this sequence, it can't be negative the square root of s. Okay, so I've done other problems on the channel that are historical mathematics problems. There's one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.